Hey guys, so welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let's carry on where we left off. It's episode 5, The Adventure of the Unspeakable Story. Potentially the last it's case coming. in this particular Jesus entry. cry peers through the thick wall of fog around us. Wisps of vapor flowed over the pistol as I cocked it, and I waited breathlessly in the stillness. I did see the Hound of the Baskervilles in the intro. What seemed an eternity until, at last... It appeared. A very famous story. From the shadows of the cloud, an enormous beast sprang out upon us. A hound it was, but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. <laughs> Probably belongs to Van Zeeks. With the smoldering glare, the whole of its ox-sized body was outlined in white-hot flames. It looks vicious as hell. Its rumbling pant and hideous howl, so terrified was I that I began to tremble with fear. Look well, Wilson, Sholmes declared, gazing upon the mystical beast. For this, this is the diabolical hound of the Baskervilles. <laughs> oh, Herlock, you dramatic fella, you. Okay, well, obviously we've just completed case four in the previous episode. Not quite sure how I feel about it, if I'm being honest. Uh, don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed it. I... I just think it was mired by too many coincidences for me to, to fully appreciate in the end. It felt more so that we got extremely lucky rather than us navigating through a trial. I'm not talking about a last minute miracle or anything like in uh, Justice for All. And I know there's always going to be things that are coincidental. It's, it's a Ace Attorney game. If we're going to have a fighting chance in court, we need this kind of stuff. Like the uh, tip of the blade found in Mr. Garadab's pipe. I think I'm okay with that. In fact, now that I think about it, I, I think my gripes are mostly linked to the jury. <laughs> like, the fact that Mrs. Garadib just happens to be juror number four, that uh, jurors five and six just happen to be in the vicinity when the when the crime occurred, I think that might be my biggest problem with it. Uh, you know, not that I have any business designing these cases or these uh, incidents, but I think probably I can attribute it to the fact that there's only one day each for, you know, the investigation and the trial... Plus, it also curbs the number of witnesses necessary for a case. Like, we have significantly less testimony because the cases are shortened in in, um, in trial. But uh, hopefully, Case 5 picks it up. I have heard great things about uh, the second game as well, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, uh, that was just my two cents on Case 4. Hope you guys appreciate that. Anyway, our first two months in London passed by in a flash. In that disconcerting courtroom experience we were first thrown into on the day we arrived in the country. Anne and Soseki-san's terrible ordeal that had followed closely behind. We had emerged victorious. Okay, so we had a two-month sabbatical, I guess, after the trauma of it all. Hopefully, Soseki is still alive. I'm sure he is, but you never know. The Reaper of the Bailey was prosecuting the case. However, there then came an abrupt end to our opportunities to appear in court. Which was hardly surprising, of course, since I was nothing more than an amateur. An unknown student of law from a faraway land. Still, weren't we supposed to, you know, get involved with, uh, English law? Take notes and whatnot? I guess, uh, Chief Justice didn't want us involved any further than that. So life in our little office was very quiet. That is, until it was shattered one day by that fateful telegram. I wonder, are we going to get, uh, closure for what happened to Mr. McGilded? 15th of April, 9.13 a.m. Narahodo's Legal Consultancy. Okay. I guess we're not just students, we're also... <laughs> you know, we're lawyers now. We've opened a business here. Oh my, we've really made this place our home. That morning, I was woken by the unreserved knocking on the door by the telegram boy. But after he'd gone... Susato-san's behavior became very obviously strange. Oh? Um, Susato-san? Yes? Is it time to leave for court already? We haven't had to leave for court for two year two months. <laughs> She's getting antsy. Let me see. What case is it today? I, uh, I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment. Am I? Or have I just been asleep for two months? Oh, no, of course not. How silly of me. But I think Iris said she would make us breakfast this morning. So, shall we go down to Mr. Sholmes' suite? Yes! Iris makes the most delicious breakfast food. 
She does, doesn't she? And once our bellies are full, we can leave for court in fighting fit form. I'm glad that we got to move into Herlock's place. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> our stipend didn't last very long. <laughs> and if we're not taking any cases, how on earth are we surviving? Let me see. What case is it today? Here we go again. Uh oh, she's... She's traumatized. She's like a psychopath of Dead Rising or something, you know? Like, I, I, we've got a case today, we've got a case today. No, Sasato, we don't, okay? You've lost your mind. She's, uh, got cabin fever. We've been trapped in this office for too long. The telegram. So, what was it about? Can I read it? The telegram that was delivered this morning, I mean. Oh, a, a telegram? I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh. <sighs> Do I have to cross-examine you? I probably need to keep my skills sharp, after all. You're a terrible liar. <laughs> Sorry, but you're not going to get away with that. Well, I didn't think I would. Okay, so why did you even bother to attempt it? Actually, um... Don't give it a moment's thought. It's... nothing. Nothing interesting. Boring, in fact. Is it to do with your father, perhaps? We haven't really heard from him. And, uh... I mean, since the beginning of the game. I'm sure he wants to check in on our progress. Ahem. <clears throat> it's just a boring old telegram. There's three times now that she's tried and failed to convince me it was nothing. I don't need Apollo's bracelet for this one. I can see it on your face. And hear it in your words. I promise that I'll tell you about it at some point. What's wrong? Am I getting deported or something? Just tell me. You know what? I'm probably gonna worry and I'm probably gonna think it's something worse than it is. All right, I understand. So, Seki-san. I suppose the Seki-san will have arrived back in Japan by now, won't he? Unless his ship mysteriously got lost at sea? Yes, I should think so. He left immediately after that terrible ordeal. Which would mean he should have completed the voyage already. We'll be just a few days away. A fortnight ago, we had that very long telegram from him, do you remember? Complaining of seasickness. By and large, it seems the voyage has been going well. Hopefully he doesn't get arrested there. You know, I know that experience. Luckily, I was a lawyer myself. Something wrong, narahota san I was just wondering what might have become of saseki san had he stayed in London, that's all. Would he been, uh, immolated by a fire? You mean, as regards Lord Van Zeeks, the Reap? Yes. I can't help wondering if seasickness would have paled into insignificance in that case. Hmm. Maybe that was just like a mild curse or something because he's too far away. He's out of the Reaper's range, so he can only <laughs> curse him with seasickness rather than instant death. The Reaper. What is it they say? That no one who stands in the dark can be saved from the Reaper. Right? Yep. Like the way that nightmarish trial ended on the very day we arrived in London. Hopefully the Beats' marriage survived as well. Even two months on, the cause of that dreadful fire is still a mystery. Yes, but at least Soseki-san is safely out of the country now. Presumably that means... That the curse of the Reaper can only take effect within the confines of the city of London, perhaps? Even if that's the case, it's a little comfort. I have a terrible sense of foreboding. I... Ple I am... Hoping that I am not accused for murder a third time, otherwise I will become his next victim. If the legend of the Reaper is to be believed, it would mean he wields the sword of justice himself. Come to think of it, I wonder what he's been up to these past two months. Surely not wielding that sword against more acquitted defendants. No, I don't think so. Apparently, Lord Van Zeeks hasn't appeared in court once since our last encounter. Ah, I guess we discouraged him from returning to court. Maybe he just feels guilty about prosecuting people and... Every time they he does, they wind up dead. You know, how would you feel if that was you? And it wasn't your fault, obviously. It's it's this quote unquote curse that you're known for. Every time you try a case and someone dies, like <laughs> I would I just quit. I'm just like I'm just gonna save some lives. I'm just gonna stay home forever. I'm gonna take another job. Yes, since Oseki san's trial, he's withdrawn from judicial service again. It seems. Really? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he chooses his. Uh, first day back from his sabbatical, uh, coinciding with our defense. Just like how he returned to court after, what, two years or something? When we first arrived here? Just like before. 
when he wasn't seen in court at all for several years. Exactly, Brinoski. You know, we're on the same wavelength here. So, it's just been me who's had to face him in his recent spate of trials, then. Ugh. Just my luck. Hey, don't complain about your luck, Rinosuke. I just had a monologue about your luck. <laughs> How lucky you are. I wonder, if luck doesn't come into it, you're like the ultimate lucky student, you know? There's a balance. You, you got the bad luck where you get accused of murder twice, and then you got good luck, as in you're successfully defending your clients. Although, one probably didn't deserve such defense, and he ended up paying for it <laughs> by bursting into flames. Sorry? What was that? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Okay. I wonder what that telegram says. I'm gonna present my armband. No, I'm gonna inspect it and then present it. It means a great deal to me, you know. That you cherish his armband so and wear it each time you appear in court. I can imagine, you know. She worked hard to teach me all she could about law and she's standing next to me in court and we've just been playing this by the seat of our pants, really. And we've, we've pulled through so far. I think we needed this break, this two-month break, just to, to recoup, uh, regroup, and study some more. I think it's probably a good idea before we start, <laughs> you know, flying into the deep end. Well, it's it's very important to me. It's what shows that I'm a lawyer. And whenever I wear it, I feel as though it gives me strength through Cosmo. I absolutely can't be without it, especially when I'm at a critical point in a trial. That's why when it slips down my arm, I always hastily pull it back up, you know? But just the other day, I noticed you were wearing it when we went to visit that park. Sometimes I forget to take it off. Plus, you know, I'm advertising my services as a lawyer, you know? We haven't got any clients. I, I think it's a pretty bold idea. It's like throwing my business card around everywhere. I suppose a quick examination wouldn't hurt. Like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> ah, the Daruma doll I brought with me from home. Still with only one eye colored in. I said I'd color the other eye once I won my first court case here in Britain, but I guess I haven't had time. But you have won, haven't you? Twice, in fact. Because I feel as though I'm still lacking as a lawyer. I tell you what, why don't you color the other eye in once you think I'm a proper, fully-fledged lawyer? Come on, Reno. Say we can't keep moving the goalposts here. If you insist. Well, she doesn't go ahead and just do it right now. I'm, I'm somewhat offended. We've only been here in London for about two months, but my desk is starting to look a little messy already. You could tidy it up once in a while. Sato-san, I always say making a mess is a small sacrifice to pay for being able to further your studies. And time spent tidying up is time you can't devote to the same cause, you know. Plus, it's a I'm gonna make a mess again anyway. And time spent on ridiculous arguments is time that could be better spent on some simple housework. Hey, arguing is my life. I'm a lawyer, okay? I'm just practicing. Anytime I'm having ridiculous arguments with you, it's practice, because there sure as hell are a lot of ridiculous arguments in court in this universe. She wins, but I'm supposed to be the lawyer here. I am grateful that uh, as I moved the screen, I didn't see her lock just hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> uh, this must be the telegram. Let's see. Ah! No, you mustn't look at that! not under any circumstances. It's boring. You'll you'll be bored to death. I can't have a dead lawyer. I'll be an assistant to no one. I'll be a, an assistant to a corpse. Uh, or, all right, I, I won't. I'm sorry, Naruhodo-san. You can be very mischievous at times. I'm mischievous! You're hiding information from me! Then put the telegram away if you don't want people looking at it. We share the space, you know. All right, let's have some breakfast. 15th of April. Shomes is sweet. Morning, Rune. Morning, Susie. Good morning, Iris. Is Herlock playing the violin? Um, Iris? What is it, Rune? What is that terrible noise? It sounds like a cat being strangled. Ah, uh, yes. You noticed that, did you? Uh, yes, I did. In fact, it's quite hard to miss. And I don't miss much. Apparently isn't in the best form this morning, it seems. Oh no, what's wrong? He looks dejected. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. G good morning. I hope you didn't hear my opinion on how you were playing the violin. Perchance, did you? 
A good morning to die, perhaps. Has something happened, Mr. Shomes? Your hair is frazzled. You, you look miserable, and, and... And the way you were playing the violin before, it was like you were... Slowly killing a cat. Sorry, I, I have to say it. Someone needs to tell you. Mm. My analytical mind is dead. Music is dead. The world is dead. Right! Damn this Blanchard existence! That's all it is, my dear fellow. Nothing of consequence. Okay, uh... Iris, I'd really like my, uh, sausage and hash browns now, please. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, Iris, is it time we ate? Some dry toast and insipid coffee for me. If it's not too much <sighs> trouble. Oh, there is a cat here. And it's still alive. That's good news. Hello. Oh, look, it's Wagahai. Good morning, boy. Hello. That must be some sort of tiny door for cats to use. But how did it get there? Hmm. Well then, everyone. Time for breakfast. Uh, wonderful. Let me help you, Iris. Ugh. It would indeed be a fine day to die. Seriously. Erlock, what's going on, man? Tell me. I knew something looked different. Something's missing from Mr. Shums' desk. Can't quite remember what it is, unfortunately. Okay, I will try to talk to him. I'm wanting to die. The missing machine. Okay, here we are. You seem to be very unhappy this morning, Mr. Shums. What's happened? It used to be the case that in my hands, this violin sung like the dawn chorus. Its mellicent tones would make flowers blue. It would? But now, the muses are unamused with me. The goddesses of music have thrown me over. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? For hours I have bowed. For days, even. Through the night, I have endeavored to no avail. That sound, my tone, is lost. That brilliant, clear, unwavering tone. Gone forever! No more recitals of unbridled emotion. <gasps> well, you haven't been practicing much lately, have you, Hurley? Don't worry, I'm sure it will come back to you in time. Heed my words, Mr. Narodo. The goddesses of the arts are fickle. One day they bestow genius on a man, the next they unmercifully withdraw it. <sighs> Sounds like he's suffering from a case of imposter syndrome. I can certainly say I've suffered through it a couple of times myself. Oh, dear. Oh, why is this happening to me? If they take the turn I have for the violin from me, what is left for pity's sake? What is left? Uh, okay, don't argue with me. Um, the deduction, perhaps? Isn't that what you're known for? And, you know, your stories? Uh, poor guy. He just wants to be good at everything. The missing machine. Mr. Sholmes, I don't like to pry, but... Your desk looks rather empty today. Ah, uh, well done, Miss Usato. Your observational skills do you credit. Oh, no, Mr. Shames. They pale into insignificance when compared to yours. You'd struggle not to notice, wouldn't you? <laughs> you mean Hurley's great analytoscope? That's at Windybanks now. Oh, sorry? Is that a Windy Bank? No, Windybanks. The porn brokery. Oh, is he not paying the bills either? What? You mean you pawned that enormous machine of yours? It has some considerable value, you see. Quite undeservingly. But isn't it a very important machine for your work? I do wish you had consulted us if, 
to a situation that becomes so desperate. I should have gladly passed what little income I have to you. Dear madam, things are far from desperate. I don't know, you look pretty desperate right now. But, but the pawnbroker has your wonderful machine. How could it be anything but desperate? Making use of a pawnbroker is quite ordinary here in London, I assure you. It is? It doesn't sound ordinary at all. It would seem that neither of you fully understand how pawnbroking works. Oh. What's to understand exactly? <laughs> how pawnbroking works. Please enlighten me. You know, this wonderful town of yours, I'm still learning a lot. Uh, what did you mean when you said we didn't understand fully how pawnbroking works? <laughs> Every time he just grades his hand. To the people of London, pawnbrokeries are akin to banks. What, so you just landed your machine, did you? Banks? A very windy bank, as you so notably put it, Mr. Narodo. On Mondays, merchants relinquish their finest jackets and trappings to their pawnbroker of choice. With the money they receive in return, they are able to trade happily through the week. And then on Saturdays, they go to recover their things using the money they've earned. Right, well what if someone else buys whatever they deposited at the pawnbroker, huh? I had no idea. This has been a fascinating lesson for us. Everyone does it, you see. Especially people in inner London. And should they have money to spare, they would purchase another fine jacket. Exactly, one that probably belongs to someone else. Especially if they can't afford to pay it back. Not to wear, obviously. But to pawn, should the need arise. Okay, so... The way I understand it, these jackets are basically another medium of exchange. They're, they're like bonds that they can cash in for money. Interesting. Oh, how ingenious. So whenever we have something that's getting in the way, we leave it at Winterbanks, you see? It was getting in the way, was it? A pawn brokery can be thought of as an extremely secure vault. Who would have thought that even pawn brokers are different here in Great Britain? I didn't realize they had pawn brokers in Japan at <laughs> this particular moment in time. Of course, you have to watch Hurley with it. Sometimes he pawns things he really shouldn't. Don't you, Hurley? Looks like he pawned his happy mood. What does it matter? The world is dead to me now. What's going on? Tell me! Don't make me present my armband to you. Mr. Shums, could you- could I ask you for your opinion about this? Could I pawn this? Probably not. Probably wouldn't be a good idea. You know, it's like pawning Kazuma. His soul. <laughs> Sitting at a pawn brokery for a week. You lure me to raise my languid head with the promise of some mental exaltation. Yet in my morbid depression, I am confronted with the most mundane of problems. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you for your opinion, I guess. My mind finds greater stimulation in the unforgiving monotony of the floor than in your miserable offering. Always glad to help. Oh, my head weighs heavy on my shoulders. <laughs> God. Okay. Well. Alright, Iris, please save us from this uh, miserable mood. Wagahai. Mr. Natsumi's cat seems to have settled in to his new home then. Oh, yes. And I've become very attached to little Waggy. Hmm. It would appear his previous owner is completely forgotten to him. <laughs> I can't deal with the. He's usually so eccentric. Cats are unfeeling creatures. Their mews are as empty as the hearts of the muses. Oh. Mr. Natsume had no intention of taking Wagi back to Japan. I wonder why he kept him in the first place. I expect he would have taken him if he could. Plus, you know. If he was staying here, he probably wanted some company. But pets are strictly forbidden aboard steamships in our experience. And for good reason. Terrible things can happen if the rules of passage are not obeyed. Yeah. Especially when it comes to cats. Well, I don't mind, because Waggy's adorable. <laughs> Cute. Yes, he really is. Oh, yes, what about the door? I don't remember seeing that tiny thing in the main door before. Where did that come from? Oh, you noticed? You're observant, Runo. Well, he didn't phase through the wall, did he? 
Look, I use this. It's my latest invention. What? What is that? What, what is it? It's a gun. I call it the cat plopper mat. Gosh, a machine for making doors just for cats. That's right. I can make a cat flap for a little fairy friend like Waggy in seconds. In seconds? And I can do it in any door at all, no matter what it's made of. It's very powerful, you see. God, I feel like I'm going to become James Bond or something. I just got to produce all these inventions that are going to come handy in handy in these cases. Wouldn't it have been quicker to just make the cat flap rather than making a machine to make the cat flap? Well, yes, maybe. But now I can make cat flaps anywhere I like. Plus, I can also monetize this invention. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You must make one for us in the door of our office upstairs, Iris. She really knows how to come up with unconventional inventions, this girl. Well, it's the golden age, Reynosuke. Everything that has been in that could be invented has been invented already. <laughs> oh, what's up? Oh, what was that? Waka hi? Oh god. Uh Well That happened. What was that? Oh no. Waka hi stangled up in your violin. Oh. I think he thinks it's a toy. No! What's he doing to it? Oh god. Oh dear, Mr. Shames' precious violin. Why should I care? What? I shouldn't be surprised. If the cat is a more accomplished musician than I now. <laughs> well, it sounded like you were strangling a cat before. Now the cat has strangled itself. Mr. Shames really is in poor spirits, isn't he? Well, what can we do? Give him a massage? But well, anyway, I'll put it back where it lives, shall I, Hurley? Out of the cat's reach, if possible. Maybe we should assess the damage. Uh... You okay? Where's this violin? It doesn't look any worse for wear. So this is the violin, is it? It's a Stradivarius. One of the finest violins in the world, made by the renowned Italian luthier Antonio Stradivari. Oh, I, I, I see. Doesn't really look like anything special to me. <laughs> Damn it, Rinosuke. Appreciate true value. I happened upon it covered in dust, languishing in a pawn shop down a nondescript back alley. Well, don't you think that someone deposited it early in the week for money, and now they can't get it back? The broker had no idea of its value, so I was able to purchase it for a mere 55 shillings. How honorable of you. And until today, it has been my faithful companion in every great Paganini-inspired performance I have made. I ask you, is there reason to live in a world devoid of music, to tolerate this blanched existence? There is none. Uh, okay, well, he sounds really frustrated that he couldn't play the violin. Um, Mr. Shames. What, dear madam, what? My thoughts are preoccupied with fancies of release from this dull routine. Well, it's about the violin. It looks very different to normal, don't you think? Hmm? What do you mean, Miss Susata? Oh, Susie's right. Oh, we've got tense music playing. What's going on? Yes, the tone of the wood is completely different. And that's not all. I'm sure there was no crack here before. Wait, it's not even the right size, is it? What's this? Someone swapped the violin somehow? I'm terribly sorry to have to tell you this, Mr. Shames, but that instrument isn't a violin at all. Then what? I believe. It's an entirely different instrument, called a viola. What? What? Mr. Shames, are you alright? You're right. You are quite right. This isn't my faithful Stradivarius. So what? Pray, 
is this piece of string flotsam? Not your faithful performing partner then, is it? Interesting. Ah, I see what must have happened. You do, Iris. This is just a simple mix-up. Sounds like Iris might be able to tell us exactly what's happened if we ask her. A simple mix-up, huh? Yeah, just turning a violin into a viola. Simple. Yet effect- What, pray, does it mean, Iris? Enlighten us, please. What did you mean by a mix-up, Iris? Well, you see, this violin... Sorry, this viola, I mean. Was at Winterfangs until last week? At, at the pawnbrokers. Not Mr. Shum's beloved musical partner. Oh, he's back. I guess all it took was a mystery. And the revelation that the uh, instrument that he struggled playing was not the instrument that he usually played. There's a proverb from the East with which you are no doubt familiar, my dear fellows. Always let a beloved child travel. Yes, indeed. So you sent your beloved violin to the pawnbrokers in the hope that it would experience personal growth? <laughs> Uh, very expensive limited edition violin. Oh, what a wonderful idea. And the pawnbroker had no idea of its value, but probably learned it and took it back. Last week I pawned my great analytoscope in order to release my precious instrument. But it would appear Mr. Winterback mistakenly furnished me with this tawdry fiddle instead. But my ears cannot be deceived by the hollow timber of this piece of timber. No, but your every sense was deceived by the fact that it just had strings. Pshaw. Fine state of affairs this is. And why I always say, Mr. Narrowder, never trust a pawnbroker. They will try to fiddle you every time. They played you like a damn fiddle, that's for sure. But earlier you told us that you could think of a pawnbroker as an extremely secure vault. Hmm. Yes, it is extremely secure. Unfortunately, the pawnbroker can swap the gold around. <laughs> Come, Mr. Narrowder, dilly dallying will get you nowhere. Sorry? Crunching your toast with that vacant aspect. Pressing your coffee are so obtusely. Are you not a little embarrassed by your own conduct, considering the urgency with which we are faced? We must visit Mr. Winterback's brokery at once. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Jones? Do you want me to run with this piece of toast in my mouth? Precisely, Mr. Sutter. Without a moment's delay. But, but I haven't finished my bacon and eggs. My dear fellow, surely you do not still intend. To crunch your bacon with an increasingly bacon aspect? To fresh your egg ever more obtusely? Alright, alright, say no more. Let's go then. Shove it all in my mouth. Don't worry, Runo. I'd be happy to heat it up for you again later. Oh, thank you, Iris. As it happens, I am rather curious to see what a British pawnbroker pawn brokers looks like. Alright, let's get a move on. Where's my coat? Hey, well, heading outside to Baker Street, we've got 221B, which is where uh, Narahodo Legal exists. Now we got the pawnbrokers, which is right next door. How very convenient. Look at all the different things in the window of this shop. Ah, oh, that's Winterbanks, the pawnbrokery. A lot of other places here, however, look closed, which is unfortunate. It looks much smarter than a pawnbroker's in Japan, doesn't it? Yes, you're right. I find pawn shops at home rather inapproachable, personally. It reminds me of tearfully parting with my favorite fountain pen. I felt so miserable. Ah, oh, Ryanosuke, why the hell did you give up your fountain pen? Although I, uh, I understand the sentiment. I'm a huge hoarder. I cannot get rid of things for the life of me. Cables? Might need them one day. <laughs> this pen that doesn't work? I don't know, maybe it'll, <laughs> it'll re revive itself somehow in a couple of days. What doesn't kill us make us us stronger, Mr. Narahode? If you say so. Okay, well, we might as well head inside. I'm curious as to what's in the telegram, but for now, let's just deal with the pawnbrokery. There are a lot of things in here. So this is a British pawnbrokery. Oh my, there are all sorts of tools and contraptions in here that I never laid eyes on before. Ah, Sasato-san. And that spark of wonder in your eyes. You can't wait to scour the shelves, can you? I'm pretty sure she's going to write down everything in her blue book so she can refer to them later on. I get the impression you enjoy places like this. Oh yes, I don't know why, but seeing such a lot of things I don't understand is a real thrill for me. I mean, yeah. My dear fellows, let us not forget why we are here. Oh, Mr. Sholmes. We are calling on matters of business, not pleasure. Okay, well, no need to punch Susato in the face just then. And clearly, Mr. Sholmes means business, too, judging from the spark of fury in his eyes. 
Oh, Mr. Shame, sir. Welcome back. Did you hear that brazen welcome? Well, yes, we are potential customers, after all. We are disgruntled customers, Mr. Narodo. And it's time to inform Mr. Winderback of our ire. Come. The fight is afoot. <laughs> oh, not the game this time. We're gonna do a dots of deduction in here. We might break something. Uh, violin, please. Before we get violent. Naturally, you will recall this, which I retreat from you some days ago. Yes. This second-rate fiddle is not of my faithful instrument, Mr. Winderback. The cut of the wood is different. It has holes in it. It's not even the same size. A wonderful summary of our observations, Mr. Shames. <clears throat> I'm, I'm so very sorry, sir. How utterly unforgivable of me. An inexcusable mistake for a pawnbroker. There's only one way to make amends. What, run away? Oh, God. Ah, please. I shall have to take my own life. At least he wasn't going to shoot us in the face. I don't think that would be necessary. Do you? If I may just say one thing before I pop off. Ah, yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, yes. Let's stop him. It was you, sir, Mr. Sholmes, who took it upon himself to remove the item the other day, I believe. What? Another Mr. Sholmes? Sorry. As I recall, I entered the storeroom to fetch your violin when I heard, Ah, here it is. You did? And when I turned to controvert you, you had taken the viola and left, sir. Wait, what? However, there can be no doubt that the blame lies firmly at my own door for allowing you to leave. So I shall not grumble or grass any longer. May this guilt die with me. No, no, no. Stop, my dear fellow. The fault is mine. And then he goes, damn right it is, and points the gun at him and shoots him. <laughs> Phew. But it appeared that the fight is over. I like how every time Susato puts on this sad expression, there's one second where she has this flicker of a smile. It's like she's psychotic. She's like, she's enjoying it. And then she realizes, actually, the situation's pretty tense. I need to put my mask of, of sadness on. <laughs> and then she gets, then she frowns. I'm worried. I'm worried about Susato-san. My assistant may be crazy. I do humbly apologize, Mr. Winderbank. Evidently, my questionable disposition precipitated this tragedy. Well, you wouldn't be Mr. Herlock Shames without that questionable disposition now, would you? <laughs> I do believe you may be right, sir. <laughs> it's either laugh or cry, I suppose. <laughs> now in between. You are, it must be said, one of my more challenging customers. I needn't remind you of the peculiar collection of items you've brought through my door in the past. Oh? Peculiar items? In the extreme, ma'am, for example, the unpublished manuscript of an eponymous work, the novels of Herlock Sholmes of some such. Oh my, a new full-fledged novel, an unpublished, a story I have yet to read, you mean. Oh, forgive me. Wait, before you die, you must tell me more. <laughs> I told you she was, I told you she was nuts. She doesn't care. She has no empathy. She's probably going to do a Susato takedown and shoot him himself. Unpublished story. Tell us before you die. I must know more. Tell me everything. Wow, Susato Sun is really fired up now. Is there really an, an unpublished story under this very roof? There's also a skull under this roof, and it's kind of strange. I've seen one here and in Mr. Holmes' suite. You know, if I had a penny every time I see the skull, I'd have two, which is two, you know, that's a lot. Of, that's not quite a lot of pennies, but it's strange that it's happened twice. Well, one day the gentleman here brought in an old metal chest, you see. I should like to entrust this to your care for a while, Mr. Winderbank. Hmm. For a chest like that? One shilling, sir. Not a farthing more. It houses something of very great value indeed. The latest manuscript. Recounting the adventures of one Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I beg your pardon? A, a, a manuscript? You wish to deposit a manuscript? Indeed I do, for I am confident it will be quite safe here. Safer than the bank, it seems. And that was that. 
As such, Mr. Shibs' latest tale of an otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom. Mr. Shelms, is that really true? Do I sense that someone doesn't want to talk about this? I continue to pay your fee, do I not? And kindly continue to store my belongings securely. Of course, sir, of course. They're safe and sound with me, I assure you, on my life. This is all very strange. Pawn brokery. I wonder, could I ask you something? Ah, gentlemen from the east, I see. Yes, that's Sable's suit. I suppose I could offer you sixpence for it. I, I, please, I do not want to just undress in the middle of this room. Okay, Susato's here. <laughs> Without wishing to offend, the tone is somewhat... dull. Sorry? Aha! But for your splendid attire, ma'am, five guineas, no less. The colors are exquisite. The design, exotic. Eastern artistry at its finest, I may I say. Oh my, five guineas, you say? How interesting. Why do I feel as though I've suffered some sort of defeat here? Also, you know, she hasn't worn anything for the past two months. Hopefully that doesn't increase the value of it. it that it, Actually, it should decrease. Actually, I was hoping to ask you about your business. I've heard it said that pawn brokeries are used rather like banks here in London. Yes, sir, indeed. Many of my customers utilize the establishment as you describe. I appraise their items and offer them a proportionate loan and two months of secure stowage. If, in that time, they repay the original sum to me plus the agreed interest, their items are happily returned. But what happens if they don't pay you the money? Then the items are offered for sale in my shop, as you can see on the shelves behind me. So you never sell items before the two months has passed, then? That's right, ma'am, that's right. Which means some considerable responsibility rests on my shoulders. Should a customer's precious belongings be lost, the only recompense is for me to end it all. The very idea, Mr. Windebank, is an absurdity. One should never talk of one's demise so casually. Says the man who was telling us all it was a good day to die only this morning. <laughs> and let us not forget that I have already helped you take measures to ensure such a tragedy never occurs. Oh, what sort of measures? I engineered a simple device, which Mr. Windebank has installed here in his shop. I call it the Red-Handed Recorder. Is that not so, Mr. Windebank? <sighs> what was that deep sigh about? The red-handed recorder. Please, tell me. What on earth is a red-handed recorder? Use your eyes, my dear fellow. There are two just below the ceiling. I can see what happens to be a camera attached to some sort of timing device. Very astute. It is indeed a camera, furnished with some hundred pieces of celluloid film. And every 30 minutes precisely, the camera automatically records the appearance of the shop. Huh. Here, yeah, I have an example I can show you. Even got a timestamp. 4 a.m. Ah, yes, a print from the camera set to record the activity at the shop counter. And it's in color, too. I developed a special type of film so sensitive it produces a crystal clear image even in darkness. That is incredible. I cannot understand why you're not a millionaire, Mr. Sholmes. Really? That's extraordinary. Yes, you can clearly see the counter and the door behind it. Look. Hmm. So you see, were someone to enter the premises with ill intent, his identity would be summarily exposed. Yeah, except there's a half an hour window in between, so... <laughs> but... Did you not say that the photographic prints were taken at 30 minute intervals? Thank you, Sato. Indeed, as you say, my dear madam. Then what if the incident were to occur in between times? One could only say... That would be a cruel twist of fate. <laughs> no, it would not be a cruel twist of fate. Hmm. I must confess, your devices have been giving me some cause for distress of late. I beg your pardon, Mr. Winnebank. Surely they are anything but distressing. Reassuring is the word. It's the cost of the film, sir. You most graciously placed not one, but two cameras in my job after all. Which means I must pay for nigh on 100 utterly useless prints every single day. I'm afraid the cost of the film will break me before I'm very much older. Hmm, that is a good point. 
It's lucky he just has to pay an ele electricity bill for some monitors. He has to pay for the film of the print. Nevertheless, a small price to pay to ensure the safety of my preferred pawn brickery, no? My dear fellows, we verge on an age where safety and security come at a price. Oh, heaven help us. <laughs> safety and security coming at a price? It's definitely gonna ramp up over the next few years. Now then, Mr. Sherbs, allow me to return your precious violin. How the hell could we get confused? The thing is, like, crimson red. Ah, the very thing. Thank you, Mr. Winderback. Perhaps this might mark the end of the peculiar items you tried to pop. Hmm? Because if anything were to happen to one of them, this would be the only answer. Uh, I really think you ought to stop waving that gun around. Someone could get hurt. Fear not. Uh, sorry? I've only loaded a single bullet, so no one but myself could possibly be harmed. Really, so if someone wrestled with you, that gun could pop off and shoot Susato in the head. That's not really what I meant. This thing is dangerous. Good day to you, then. Mr. Winterback. It's been a pleasure as always, Mr. Shames. Okay, well, violence secured. Say, Mr. Narahede. Now we can explore at last. I, I guess we can. Where do we even begin? God, there's so much to look at.